In this video, we'll look at the basic functioning of three types of FETs, the JFET, the DMOSFET, and the EMOSFET. Um, to start, maybe the best way to look uh, first is, is right at the zero volt characteristics. Um, if you remember for the JFET, uh, when there's zero voltage uh, at the gate with reference to the source, so that's VGS, um, zero volts VGS, you will have uh, the transistor as on as it can be. So that value is some value of current, which is a maximum. So for an end channel, might be up here. And of course, we called that IDSS. That's the drain current with the gate to source shorted, or in other words, zero volts. Then you add negative voltage and you start to narrow the channel and um, drain current will decrease as the gate voltage is increased in the negative direction. So we have this kind of a function where drain current would go down. It's not linear. <clears throat> and it'll reach a point where uh, some value of gate voltage, known as VGS off, will uh, result in uh, no current flowing. So that's the end channel. JFET. The P channel JFET operas, operates um, just in opposite ways. So again, for the P channel with zero volts on the gate, you would have a maximum current, uh, uh, IDSS, although it'll be in the opposite direction. So it'll be sh we'll, we'll represent that as a negative uh, compared to the N channel. Um, but there's IDSS. And again, as you add gate voltage, in this case, it's positive gate voltage, um, you will uh, decrease the drain current. And again, in a nonlinear function. And you, there will be some amount of VGS that will close the channel completely. And again, that's just VGS off. <clears throat> okay. So we have the JFET, N channel, P channel. Um, yeah, the uh, JFET is known as a depletion only device uh, because you can only deplete or decrease drain current. Um, you can't do anything to increase it. You know, in, by adding voltage to the gate, uh, you can only only decrease it. Uh, the DMOSFET, however, uh, you can increase or decrease. So, D for depletion, but it actually can be depleted or enhanced as far as the drain current goes. If we again start with the zero volt characteristic, um, well, with zero volts on the gate of a DMOSFET for an N channel, there will be some amount of drain current. And that again is IDSS because it's the amount of drain current uh, with the gate shorted to the source. So that uh, still has a value for that. Now, with a DMOSFET, you can, for an N channel, you can um, make the gate uh, more negative than zero volts and deplete the drain current all the way down to zero. And you can also, though, add a positive voltage to the gate and enhance the drain current so you can increase the drain current to some maximum that the data sheet would tell you you mustn't exceed. So maybe ID max, we could call that. <clears throat> so that's the big difference between a DMOSFET and a JFET. Um, you know, the DMOSFET, yes, you can still deplete, but you can also enhance. We'll do the uh, P channel in a minute. Uh, while we have that in our minds, though, let's move to the EMOSFET because it's, it's, it's known as the, uh, the E for enhancement. You can only enhance the drain current on an EMOSFET. And again, if we start with um, the zero volt reference, we can look over here and um, there'll be no current actually at zero volts. And in fact, 
it'll take some amount of gate voltage to even get current started. And that is known as um, VGS uh, threshold. <clears throat> so there's a gate voltage and it would for for an end channel it would be a positive gate voltage to even get things started so once you get to the threshold voltage and now you can um, increase the gate voltage from there and the drain current will increase again non-linearly and it'll increase to some maximum so we could call that id max And um, you can see then that the eMOSFET really, it, you can't deplete it. It's already at zero. Like just picking it up off the shelf, it's already off. And you can enhance strain current. For a DMOSFET at zero volts, well, you can go either direction. You can deplete the current with negative voltage. You can enhance the drain current with positive voltage. And a JFET's depletion only, uh, of course, you can only deplete it. You can't get it to go any higher. Zero volts is as long as it can be. Um, we can do the p-channel versions for the DMOSFET. Um, again, it would be current in the opposite direction represented as a negative. And so you still have IDSS and um, you can deplete it with positive voltage, with positive gate voltage, and get the VGS off. And you can go the other direction as well. Um, you can add negative voltage to the gate of a P-channel DMOSFET, and you'll you will enhance drain current. So a little bit of a rough sketch there. <laughs> And that'll go to some maximum. The data sheet again would give you an idea of what the maximum is. <clears throat> and for the eMOSFET, same thing. You'll notice all these are just mirror images, essentially, of each other. So there would be, for the P-channel eMOSFET, there would be some gate voltage, VGS, and it would be some negative gate voltage that would get things started, also known as a VGS threshold. And once you increase in a negative direction, you'll start to bring up the drain current, you'll start to enhance the drain current, and again, non-linearly, and uh, there'll be some maximum here. If you remember, there's a formula then that you can use to theoretically predict any value of drain current for a given gate voltage. Uh, that's known as the transconductance formula. And I wrote it underneath each of these FET types uh, to illustrate that it will work. That same formula will work for the JFET and the DMOSFET. It will not work for the EMOSFET. And let's show you why, and then we'll have to come up with a new formula for the EMOSFET. But if you remember, um, it's just showing a way to see that uh, drain current is a function of gate to source voltage. And um, we use the values of IDSS and VGS off. And we know that, you know, the way the formula is going to work is. Um, your value of VGS as it relates to VGS off will determine how much of IDSS um, is flowing. Um, and you can rearrange this formula to solve for VGS. So if you had a particular value of drain current that you wanted, and you wanted to know what gate voltage would give you that drain current, of course, using algebra, you can reshuffle this formula. But there's the transconductance formula for the transconductance curve for a JFET N channel or P channel. Also works for a DMOSFET. Uh, of course, the reason it works for these two, well, we have two points, you know, no matter what we're looking for. Uh, we have IDSS and VGS off to, 
to use <clears throat> as two points that are known. The problem, of course, when you look at the eMOSFET is the value for IDSS is zero. When there's zero volts on the gate, there's zero current. And I think you can see the big trouble there. If IDSS is always zero, then Anything times zero is zero. I mean, obviously, the, the formula is useless. So we'll have to come up with uh, something else. We'll have to create a different formula for the eMOSFET. So this is no good. So what we'll do is create a point for the eMOSFET. And that point can just be any point along the, the, the function. Um, and we'll call it um, VGS on. And ID on so it's this point here uh, ID on is just the value of drain current um, that occurs when this value of VGS on is applied to the gate so now we've got two points that we can use and we'll create a formula and this is the formula we'll use for the eMOSFET um, you create a constant K using this ID on and VGS on and VGS threshold. So these are some known points on the function right here. And then um, once you create that constant from these known values, uh, we'll use that constant in place of IDSS. And um, here's the formula then that we use. So you can, for the MOSFET, also theoretically predict any value of drain current for a given value of gate voltage. And in reverse, if you wanted to find out what value of gate voltage will produce a certain value of drain current, of course, you can shuffle the formula algebraically and find that. You can do these kind of problems old school with graph paper, pencil and paper. Um, or, of course, Excel is the way to go um, if you can just put things into Excel uh, when you're trying to do theoretical problems on FETs where you want to draw transconductance curves. Um, Excel is definitely a nice tool to use. Of course, the same uh, formula works for the P-channel, too, where you would have a value of ID on um, that you would just pick and apply to.